Last time, we demonstrated how a ring magnet below, a four inch one in this case, and a four inch set of same pole opposing made a spring that would support as a, a levitation bearing, uh, friction free movement. Okay? Now, what I did in the second phase was to make vertical, make the magnets vertical, and again, they press upward. But in this case, I used a three inch, and it's outside the perimeter of these so that it weakens as it goes down. So you have to use the biggest one, right? Now, once this was uh, applied to the big uh, thing, I built the design I showed last time with four uh, different circuits. Two direct current circuits from the lower thing, similar to that, and above it a tower of uh, 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 three-phase, two three-phase ones on a uh, graffiti paint can, or rather a Gillette uh, shaving can. Um, and you can add more. Now in the middle I put a, a, a fiber stick and uh, a, a, a screw uh, smoothed off to hold it at a, just one point at the top, right? And move the fins to the outside. So the lower one here, the white ones, have uh, 550 and the uh, number 32 wire and the uh, yellow. Uh, number 28 wire, only 320, and 320s around the bottom. So I've set the bottom ones in series on the right-hand uh, uh, voltmeter, and the one on the, uh, the white one with the more turns uh, in the middle, and on the left I have the ones with fewer turns. This is a Starship coil, which uh, can take the energy from the uh, levitation generator and uh, uh, offer personal protection of your memory and your uh, mental coherence identity during a pole shift, right? Everyone should have a small one of these, you know, with a battery. This is my layout tray for uh, doing various uh, things. Here's a magnet for centering, and I put the starship coil there. Now, there's many kinds of starship coils, and uh, you know this is uh, there's better ones than this now. There's flat ones and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so um, if we look over here. Here's a full-scale one, the biggest I could do on that. And uh, this one might, would be appropriate for, say, a small flying saucer, maybe 20 feet in diameter, or 70% uh, levitation on a small vehicle, which would uh, be uh, helpful because uh, you could still control it because it would uh, touch the ground and it would be steerable and so on and so forth and would be more easily run from the levitation generator that would be supplying this with the energy. Uh, multiple ones to the rear wheels through the control box through the pleasant day magnetic drives. 
Okay, I showed you the 1K model with the fiber stick in the middle. This is the 2K model, and it advances a step further by having magnets on either side of the coil. By doing that, you suspend it upward and you suspend it sideways. And by having a smaller one on the top with a double layer of magnets instead of a single layer, you're increasing the output and at the same time you're keeping it centered without the stick because you're making a sort of pyramid triangle of energy so that it's structural. It's a virtual axis of complete energy at a distance through empty space. So even if you use a uh, fiber rod to orientate these and center them, you can remove it. Now, the uh, a tower can go upward. And in fact, the masterpiece of the solar system are, are the Moon and Mars towers, where they built a, a, a levitation device like this on the bottom layers and channeled the energy down below to release oxygen from the rock which they had done before to just stay there. And as they, uh, it rose, it turned turbines like this, like our air turbine on the outside here. On the inside, you know, uh, a steam equivalent to our water power and so on. And they built the next layer, which generated more energy, and the next layer, and the next layer, and the next layer, all levitated upward, all stable, and they lived at the top in their newfound atmosphere and they're trying to create an atmosphere for the planet. And it seems that they abandoned this project after who knows how many generations and then used those starship coils and uh, large craters to build le levitation devices as they hollowed out the moon in order to be able to move the orbit probably from between where Mars and Jupiter is now which was a dangerous orbit being hit by many uh, smaller asteroids to uh, an orbit around the Earth. And they may be considering moving it again if the Earth is going to be attacked from the Oort belt by a large uh, uh, thing and maybe break up. So, you know, this shows the, uh, an evolution of a technology that isn't the kind that a human with uh, the machine age technology of the Industrial Revolution would think of. And now is coming into focus as we do this. And the levitation of the starship coils can be used in cars also to just like in the Aurora 2, the military craft, the stealth aircraft that have 70 or 80 or 90 percent levitation and then jets providing the rest of the propulsion. You can have, say, the most primitive one from the 60s, 70s, the T. Are the three B uh, one shown in English at Broadmoor or whatever, uh, lifting uh, the car part way, but uh, these supplying energy to the wheels with magnetic drives like the one in the background here that have been on previous videos, and uh, and uh, you, you know you can control it, which you can't do if you have a bunch of floating vehicles. They had a great deal of difficulty controlling the early flying saucers. They needed those jets, you know. Uh, and they're just overcoming those problems of military now, you know. Uh, and they don't make good weapons until there were beam weapons. There's a funny one with Hitler showing him with one of the flying saucers during late World War II. And it's got two machine guns from the top of the tur turret. It's funny as hell because two machine guns is like World War I. It would do nothing against a Spitfire or anything with eight. Now here I'm just going to show you lighting fixtures from the age of electricity. This is an elegant one here. Here's a one by Latique, a famous modern from France. And you can see that they're doing this level thing, and they're, but they don't show the cord. It's like they're ashamed that they're getting energy from outside. They want the energy to be spacey. Modern, super modern, do you see what I mean? So they want to get the energy from instant miraculous means. And uh, at the same time that they're building these modern ones, uh, in the 30s you see the cheap ones that are made of stamped metal, show the cords. And you realize that, look, the advertisements of cheap magazines like True and whatnot, you know, the people in farms and the small towns just got electricity. They're proud to be hooked up to electricity under the WP 
EPA, uh, Tennessee Valley Authority in the states, and other hydro projects in other countries. So it just shows, to me, what this shows is from the whole aspect of some of these stacked ones is that they were channeling from alien cultures and doing reverse engineering unconsciously. And they didn't know it because the gatekeeper on their mind said that it was impossible and they would be ridiculed. And this goes on still today. So that's it. Except I want to show you just one thing with the one projects that are begging to be done. Shoes with a, a spring plastic with two magnets, just like we had with levitation there with a coil between them that generates electricity. Your e-pad that's taking this video right now, they're in a small pocket, so you walk along, and while you're walking, you're walking, it keeps your e-pad charged, okay? And maybe you improve it, and it'll keep your laptop. That project two, this is a merry-go-round. All the metal and, and, and wood merry-go-rounds have been banned. This one's made out of plastic, like Fisher-Price toys, and it's got astroturf very close to the level ground so that uh, kids can't get their heads and their feet broken inside it and so on. And it generates electricity as the kids push it around and light these nearby LED towers that are like the headlights in the new cars. You see what I mean? And as the kids push it, they make the lights brighter. So the kids are actually producing energy. This is a teaching device of the new space age. And here I showed uh, fins up above, not below, because the, the EPA, will, uh, you know, the, the, the women will complain about that, that want safety for their children and worry, and up above. And that will limit this to three to eight-year-olds to keep the 10 or 12-year-olds uh, from smoking pot and bringing their pistols down in the, uh, Detroit or someplace. You know, I, I don't even care about that. Anyway, so, you know, playgrounds, electric generation playgrounds for the kids. There's other plastic enclosures, ones where they could do levitation by generating uh, through coils with a hand crank and so on and so forth. So I hope you're all well healthy and uh, feeling positive and I just want to say greetings from Arcturus. <laughs>